Jermaine Music was becoming one of the hottest new rappers out of Baton Rouge before he got locked up on a gun case. He might be coming home soon though, and there's no telling what'll happen when he does. From getting shot and robbing dice games, to sending death threats at Donald Trump and getting interrogated by the Secret Service, this is the wild story of Main Music. Let's get right into it. Main Music came up in Baton Rouge and started rapping at a young age. But even though he knew he wanted to be a rapper, the dreams didn't keep him out of the streets and he ended up with both feet in the trenches. A lot of rappers end up dropping out of high school eventually, but Maine was getting into so much trouble as a kid that he got expelled in 8th grade from all the local schools. But before he got kicked out, Maine met his homie Tech in middle school and they've been close as brothers ever since. Maine could have gone to school in a different county even after he got kicked out, but his mom couldn't afford to drive him there every day so he just ended up chilling on the block with all the older dudes and getting deeper in the streets. In an interview with Say Cheese TV, Maine said he had a lot of fun running around with two guns at 14 years old and selling weed to bring money in. Maine spent a lot of time just writing bars and rapping on the block too. And when they were still teenagers, him and Tech started putting on shows in the local scene. They were inspired by dudes like Boosie Badass who came from the streets and used everything he experienced to make raw southern classics. Maine and Tech wanted to do the same thing in their own lane. They were both active in the streets, but at the same time, they were always working on their music too. It took a while for them to pick up any attention outside of Baton Rouge though, and the money was never good enough for them to take it full time. Maine tried working a legit job once, but it almost ended up getting them sent to prison. Maine's uncle ran a company that did flooring work in people's houses, and he hired Maine and one of his homies to help him out. They were going in the houses people were still living in, but Maine thought they were abandoned and started stealing anything valuable while they were working. One day, when Maine and his homie jacked some stuff out of a house and put it in the work van, the people who lived there called up his uncle tripping over the situation. They had to turn around and give everything back, and Maine's uncle actually came close to calling the cops on them. Maine's uncle decided not to press the issue, but he ended up in prison anyways. Besides selling weed, Maine also got money from shooting dice. You can't win every game though, and one time some dudes broke him for every dollar he had. Maine wasn't just gonna let them walk away with his money like that though, and he rolled back up to the spot and robbed everyone there. One of the dudes ended up snitching on Maine and got him locked up for two years, but at the same time, Tech was making moves in the industry. He linked up with Master P from No Limit and started learning how the game worked, and when Maine came back home, they went to California together to try and get the music popping for real. Maine says he learned a lot from watching how Master P moved, but the No Limit situation didn't end up working out for them. For a while, it seemed like Maine and Tech would never blow up like they wanted to, but in 2016, everything changed overnight. Tech and Maine dropped the track Ain't No Coming Down in 2016, but the song wasn't what put them in the headlines. At the beginning of the track, Maine sent shots at Donald Trump, and in another clip, he threatened to go to war with him after Trump criticized people on food stamps. But I really want to go to war with Donald Trump, because Donald Trump trying to take food stamps from my mama, and that's all the f she got. So you better stay the f down. Look, long as the mother f government let us keep food stamps in Sherwood, we gonna be good. But the first time this pass a law talking about he taking Louisiana purchase, shit gonna get ugly. But sending death threats at Donald Trump wasn't the best move. At the end of the video, Maine also said, We want war, we gonna declare war. And I ain't worrying about ISIS because um, they just called me, they want me to f with them now. It was pretty clear that he was just joking, but sending threats at Trump and saying he was cool with ISIS had the cops knocking at his door the next day. They came through and checked to see if anyone in the Ain't No Coming Down video had warrants out for them, but they had to leave when everyone involved with the situation was good. That wasn't the end of it for main music though. That same week, the Secret Service brought him in for interrogation over the shots he sent at Trump. According to Tech, I mean, with a $23,000 bond, they weren't serious. They, no, they just they really, they really just the wanted or anything else. They really wanted just to get him and let him know, like, don't say nothing else. Like they said this specifically, don't say Donald Trump name and war in the same sentence. Luckily, Maine didn't get taken down by the feds over the Trump situation, but that wasn't all the trouble that ain't no coming down cause for him. In June 2016, he was booked on weapons charges over a robbery at a gun shop called Mo Guns and Ammo in 2015. Around 50 guns were stolen from the store, and the police said a bunch of the straps showed up in the Ain't No Coming Down video. The gun store owner allegedly recognized some of the weapons in the video, and according to the police, they could even see the serial number on one of the pistols. Maine bonded out on the charge and got back to the music grind, and by that point, Tech and him were getting some serious momentum in the industry. All of the drama helped put them in the spotlight and their new tracks were racking up millions of views on YouTube. 
It looked like all the work was finally going to pay off and launch him into the mainstream. But then Maine Music got caught up in a situation that almost left him dead. Maine was beefing with another Baton Rouge rapper named Sherwood Marty at the time. And at one point, the ops caught him lacking and shot up his whip 37 times. Maine caught three bullets but came out without any serious injuries. Nobody was ever booked for the shooting, but pretty much everyone believed Sherwood Marty was involved somehow. Maine did his ops for not killing him on the track insurance and said, Caught me off it, beat me in the ass, they hit me in the leg, in the arm, in the thigh, but it could have been the head. But instead they had their eyes closed, they thought I was dead. Bitch ass I'm 6 foot 6 and missed 37 shots. Bitch ass how you hit 3 out of 37? Now either God was by my side or them shooters was blind. Maine said he would eventually leave Baton Rouge after he got big enough, but the streets almost caught up to him before he had the chance. He made it out of the situation alive and had his name buzzing, but then Maine went down for the case that he's still serving time for today. In August 2018, Maine was pulled over after the cops noticed him swerving all over the road. According to police, Maine's hands were shaking and he was talking nonsense when they asked where he was going. That's when they spotted a bottle of Fanta with lean in it and decided to search his whip. Maine was already on probation for lean and was driving without a license. He probably would have gotten off easy if that's all the cops found. But when they went through his car, they found a loaded pistol hidden inside the middle console. He was already a felon and Louisiana don't play when it comes to gun laws. So Maine got hit with a wild 75 month sentence when he pleaded guilty in 2019. Tech said a couple of years ago, If he get all these classes and shit like he trying to do, like, you know, he got, he gonna have two more years, he'll be home 2022. But obviously it didn't work out like that for Maine. It's not clear when Maine will actually get to come home, but some sources report that he's scheduled to get out in June 2024. Tech has been trying to hold it down in the rap game since Maine got locked up, but unfortunately their Spider Gang crew lost a lot of momentum after Maine got booked. But while a lot of fans might have forgotten about him since the arrest, it won't really matter for Maine because another one of his homies became one of the biggest rappers in the world. Youngboy never broke again, took over the entire rap game, and has been putting on for Baton Rouge the whole time. And he has ties with main music from way back in the day. It's kind of complicated because Tech is cool with Youngboy's op, Fredo Bang. But a few months ago, Youngboy made it clear that he's still rocking with Main. He posted Main on IG and said that he's got racks for him when he gets out. So at least Main knows he won't have to go back to shooting dice and selling weed while he gets his music popping again. Having one of the biggest artists in the world behind him is huge for main music. He's still dropping a few things from prison, but if he gets out next year and links up with Youngboy in the booth, it'll put him on an even bigger level than he was before he got booked.